The emotion goes cross. Number 83. Vogel is going to be stuck. Jim Morrissey on the blitz that time. Vogel had no chance. You have to think that you're going to be the one to make the tackle every single play. That's how I looked at it. No matter if I was on special teams or I was on the defense, you know, I assumed that I was going to make the tackle. I just felt that way, and I was. That was how I geared up for every play. It was that I was going to be the one to make the tackle. George Perlis, 1983, his first year, we, we kind of won uh, more games than the year before. Then, then the, my senior year, we won more games than the year before. So it was, it was a building process that I think two or three years later, they won the Rose Bowl and won, I think, 10 games. So it was definitely a you know, satisfaction that, uh, you know, that we put Michigan State back in the bowl. You know, I did have fun. Again, I was a rookie that year. I was by myself, so I didn't have anything to do. And they they asked anybody if they wanted to come down and, and take part in it, then you know, show up at this place. Uh, and we filmed and we made the sh you know the video the whole day and just had fun. But I, yeah, the, the idea of the dancing moves was Mike Singletary's, and I blame him for all the embarrassment I've had over the last 30 years or whatever it's been. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Big Ten Legends, a show where we take you through Big Ten sports history with some of the best athletes. You'll learn about their biggest moments both on and off the field as they relive their amazing careers. I'm your host, Seth Newman, and for this episode, we'll be joined by Jim Morrissey, Michigan State football player from 1981 through 1984. We're ready to start the interview, so sit back and enjoy Big Ten Legends. Joining us today is Jim Morrissey, Michigan State linebacker from 1981 through 84, team captain, All Big Ten, Super Bowl winner with the 1985 Chicago Bears, and member of the Super Bowl Shuffle. Jim's football career had to start somewhere. So, Jim, when did you first start playing football, and did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah, I started playing football in seventh grade. As an organized, uh, first organized football I played was seventh grade school team. I also played basketball and baseball growing up. Did you have a favorite football player when you were growing up? Yeah, I was a big Lions fan uh, growing up in Flint. Um, and the two guys uh, that I, I followed probably closer than anybody else was um, Greg Landry and Charlie Sanders. When did you first start getting recruited for football? What was that whole process like for you? And did you have a few schools that you were interested in? You know, the rec recruiting pl process back then was 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 very short. Uh, at least it was short for me. But not like it is today, where the kids are being contacted basically after their sophomore years. I th I think uh, what I remember of it is that you know you played your senior year, and then and you made a couple visits, two or three visits after that, and then by by end January you were making your decision. So I uh, I was recruited by Michigan, Michigan State. But was not offered a scholarship early on in the in the process. Obviously, late in the process, Michigan State offered me a scholarship. Uh, Central Michigan and Western Michigan offered, but that was about it. I was basically, and I don't know if I told schools. I think I did, but I, I told them I wanted to stay in the stay in the state of Michigan. Uh, so I think that's why Central, Western, Michigan State, and Michigan were my top choices. But um, you know, obviously it worked out for the best. Uh, Michigan State came in late with an offer, and I jumped on it right away. So uh, that was a recruiting process that I remember. Once you got to Michigan State, were there any players that helped you adjust to the college football level? Any older players take you under their wing? I would I would say George Cooper. When I first came in, uh, I was a linebacker, but then, like, after two or three weeks after I was in training camp, they moved me to tight end. And at that point, Al Kimichek, who was a senior as well, George Cooper on defense, Al Kimichek on offense, they basically helped me um, throughout the, the freshman year in you know, the process of, of playing Big Ten football. So, yeah, those two guys I would, I would single out as, as guys that really helped me through the process. Talking with Jim Morrissey, Michigan State football player from 1981 through 84, and Jim, you came to MSU as a linebacker but switched to tight end. When did you switch back to linebacker? Uh, that, that that spring. So I played freshman year as a tight end, and then the spring pra or spring uh, actually it was winter conditioning. Uh, they moved me back to linebacker, getting ready for spring practice. When you arrived at Michigan State, what were your expectations for yourself and for the team? 
Well, the team, I think they were coming off the Big Ten Championship in 1979. I, I, I came on board in 1981, so they did have a, a winning experience, um, you know, coming from 79. Uh, 1980, I think they were close to 500, a little bit above 500. Uh, 1981, again, we were close to 500, but then uh, we kind of went uh, uh, last year from Muddy Waters, we were 2-9, and nine, so that was a challenging season, but we were always competitive, and what I thought, you know, that Michigan State um, at that time was a very competitive football team with some great, great talent, uh, great players. Um, so it was, you know, my expectations were to, like any team that I started with, I, w- I wanted to come in and, and show them that I could help uh, contribute to the team and at any position or at any capacity. Obviously, I I played tight end my freshman year, but I I played all the special teams, so I tried to help out on special teams and uh, do as much as I can to help the team win. Jim, I love asking this question. Did you have a welcome to college football moment during your time at Michigan State, whether it was a play or in practice or in a game, when you realized this was not high school football anymore? <laughs> uh, let's see. As a freshman, I mean, I mean it, was a, it was definitely a, a step up. Uh, it was a little bit faster than high school, a little bit, you know, bigger, faster players. Freshman year, I really can't single out one play. Um, I just think the overall challenge of, you know, fitting in and learning the system and and trying to do the best you possibly can uh, to help the team. I think that's what I remember more about most about anything is just as a, uh, you know, new experience, uh, new teammates. Just everything, the, the the overall experience as a as being a freshman on a Big Ten football team was was enough. 1982 was your sophomore season at Michigan State. Unfortunately, the team was two and nine, but seven of those nine losses were by single digits. Did you feel that the team was much better than what the record said on paper? Yeah, that was a tough team. That was we had some great players on that team. Um, we had a great coach, Joe, uh, uh, Joe Pendry was our defense was our. No, I take that back. Joe Penry was our so, uh, my freshman coach. He left after that freshman year. So if I can say one thing of, uh, I think, reason not reason why, but if you look back, uh, if we did have Joe Penry as an offensive coordinator, we probably wouldn't have lost all those those seven games. Maybe we win four or five of those games because of how good of a coach he was. So. That was a big loss for us. We lost him uh, to start the season my sophomore year, and that was a, in my opinion, that was a huge loss for us. Talking with Jim Morrissey, Michigan State linebacker from 1981 through 84. Now, Jim, Michigan State's biggest rivals are Michigan and Notre Dame. So what were those games like? What was your first taste of those rivalries? I think they're definitely on the on your schedule, that's for sure. You, you definitely uh, uh, look forward to playing those games, like every other game. But, yeah, the Notre Dame-Michigan, those those two teams or those two games are always – a little bit more hyped up, which is which is great. Great for college football. Great for Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame. So it's it's a great atmosphere. Uh, I think the fans really enjoy it as well. But yeah, was, those are some uh, good games. Actually, that was my first game I ever started was against Notre Dame my sophomore year. So that one has a special place in my heart. So that was a that was a great game. And we lost again. Yeah, we lost that one, eleven to three. So there's one of those single digit. <laughs> Uh, losses that we had in, in, in that in that year, we lost 11 to three. They scored three field goals and a safety on us, and we just we just uh, we just mustered up a field goal. So yeah, it was a it was a very good defensive team that I played with that year. Two of the biggest wins for Michigan State during your time there, Jim, was Notre Dame in 1983, 28 23, and Michigan in 1984, 19 to seven. Both were road games. What do you remember about those games? It must have been very satisfying beating your rivals, right? Well, it's all, it's always good beating a team at their home home field. So th- those two games really stick out um, for my junior and senior years. Uh, but the, you know, the, to go into Notre Dame and and, and beat them, um, that was just a great great game by us. Great game plan. Daryl Turner, I think, caught like an eighty yard touchdown pass. I think we ran a. A uh, long kickoff return back. Same thing with Michigan the next year. Bobby Morris ran back the nice punt return. And we played a great defensive game that year. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, who was a Michigan coach, broke his arm. So that that definitely um, 
help with you know just allowing them to score seven points. So, uh, those, yeah, those two games, uh, my final two years with George Perlis, uh, those those basically stick out as some great games that we won on the road. Jim, during your senior season, Michigan State is playing Iowa on the road, and the Hawkeyes had just scored a touchdown with 44 seconds left. MSU was winning 17-16, to and Iowa decided to go for two points. Their quarterback, Chuck Long, tries to score, but you stuff him right at the goal line. Do you remember that play? Can you take me through it? Oh, I can, I can still see it in my eyes. That's a, 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 if you think about one play in my, my four years at Michigan State, I would have to bring that play up. Uh, and believe it or not, it was uh, they ran the option with Chuck Long going to my left. And I remember watching that play in the film that, that week. And when I saw their fullback go in motion, I knew there was going to be that play. And, and I kind of moved to my left a little bit. And, and my defensive, defensive end on that play, is his, his, his only responsibility is to not let that offensive tackle out on me, who, who I was the middle linebacker. And he kind of shot the gap. So the offensive tackle had a clear shot on me. So I kind of had to step back and kind of get around and go in the end zone a little bit. So then when I saw Chuck Long hold the ball and go in, and, and uh, uh, Shane Bowler and myself kind of torpedoed ourselves at the same time at Chuck Long. And I know I saw some type of clip on the TV show about three months ago, and, and they they still believe, or at least when that, that, that show was made, that they believe that they scored that touchdown but or that two-point conversion. But I know that referee made an excellent call because – Chuck Long's upper body was across the, the goal line, but because we torpedoed in there, either Shane or myself hit that football, and it and it fell down to his midsection, and the ball was not over the goal line, but Chuck Long's you know upper body was, but or up to, you know his chest and, and above was over, but the ball was not over. That was a great call by that that referee, and and that was a huge game for us. That was just a um, you know a, a very good again winning at Iowa was a great, great win. That was a huge goal line stand to win the game. That tackle summed up your senior season because you finished with 137 tackles that year, and that's pretty high up there on the all-time list at MSU. So what was your mentality? Why did you always have a nose for the ball that season? Well, you just you have to think that you're going to be the one to make the tackle every single play. That's how I looked at it, no matter if I was on special teams or I was on the defense. You know, I assumed that I was going to make the tackle. I just felt that way, and I was that was how I geared up for every play was that I was going to be the one to make the tackle. But I had a lot of – I mean, I was in a position to make tackles. It was a stunt 4-3. You know, I played in that system. Uh, Shane Bulla, Chuck Bulla, Percy Snow. There's a lot of great linebackers that played in that, in that system. And basically that system is allowed and should have the middle linebacker make the tackles because of the stunt 4-3 in front and the, and the defensive ends. Their responsibility was to keep – you know, blockers off the middle linebacker. And I had some great, you know, defensive linemen. I had some great uh, outside linebackers that helped me and, and helped the team uh, basically work that concept or work that process to uh, to allow me to make tackles from sideline to sideline. Talking with Jim Morrissey, Michigan State linebacker from 1981 through 84, and Jim, you were named team captain in all Big Ten during your senior season. What do those accolades mean to you? Team captain means everything to me. I mean, that's that's you know, people strive for that. I would I would hope. I you always want to be a good teammate. You always want to be a good leader. Uh, when those things fall into place and they elect you as a captain, that's it was a great honor, a uh, great honor that I've always uh, believed that probably one of my top honors to be uh, to be you know selected as a captain at Michigan State. All Big Ten again, that was a great honor, but uh, it was more of a a team honor. Um, because of the great defensive tackles and defensive ends that I had playing in front of me. During your senior season, Michigan State makes it to the Cherry Bowl. Was that satisfying that during your career the team improved and reached a bowl game in your final season at Michigan State? It was. It was. Based on you know my first two years, we kind of struggled a little bit, and my sophomore year we struggled quite a bit to only win two games, and then little by little the the uh, as George Perlis, 1983, his first year, we, we kind of won uh, more games than the year before. Than, than the, my senior year, we won more games than the year before. So it was it was a building process that I think two or three years later they won the Rose Bowl and won, I think, ten games. So it was definitely a you know, satisfaction that, uh, you know, that we put Michigan State back in the bowl, bowl game. 
Is preparation any different for a bowl game? Do you remember it being any more intense? No, I don't think it was. I don't think it was. It was uh, it was the same. You know, Nick Saban was the defensive coordinator, so he he really had a tight ship, and he did a great job in, in being the defensive coordinator. But he was as he is now. He was no nonsense. He was, uh, you know, you go out to work and, and you get the most out of your uh, allowed time to, to practice, and you know, the focus of of trying to win the game, and and uh, yeah, we got a lot of work done. So what do you remember about the Cherry Bowl against Army? The game was very low scoring. I believe the final score of that game was Army 10, Michigan State 6. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, uh, we were we were uh, challenged, but that was the number one rushing team in the, in the nation that year. Army had a great rushing attack. Uh, we held them to the lowest rushing total all year, but uh, they, they scored enough points to win, so... Uh, you know, we shouldn't have we shouldn't have let them allow we shouldn't have given them ten points. But I know uh, Ralph Mosienko made a sixty-one yard field goal, but then it was called back. So yeah, so we would have we were trying to put points on, but it just didn't happen that game. Do you have a favorite memory during your time at Michigan State that we haven't discussed? Whether it was a game or a play or something off the field that you look back on fondly. Well, you did mention some good ones. I will say that the Notre Dame game at Notre Dame. We came back from Notre Dame that when we won in '83, and it was a great uh, team team win, team celebration. So I do remember that game. Um, I just as I just look back on all those games and the experiences that I had, and the friendships I still have, and the coaches that I still know, and it, it was just a great experience. The overall experience was great. Talking with Jim Morrissey, Michigan State linebacker from 1981 through 84. And Jim, you were drafted in the 11th round of the 1985 NFL Draft to the Chicago Bears. What was that whole experience of being drafted like for you? Was it a dream come true? It was a dream come true. It was it was something that I really didn't think about uh, until maybe my end of my junior year, going into my senior year, and a defensive line coach, Steve Furness, uh, who was on Michigan State's uh, coaching staff at that point said you know you better get ready you better get ready and at, and at that point that was the first time that I really thought well maybe I do have a chance maybe I do have a shot at at playing professional football so but in regards to getting ready you know I, I basically went about my business of trying to help Michigan State win and then based on my production on the field if I was going to get an opportunity then I was going to you know try my best and try and make the team but yeah to be drafted was a dream come true, and then just an opportunity to make the football team was a was a dream come true, and be associated with the Chicago Bears and the likes of Walter Payton, Jim McMahon, Richard Dent, you know Jimbo Covert. There's some great, great players, great personalities from that, those 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 Bears teams. Jim, you went from being on a team that struggled to win to playing on the 1985 Chicago Bears, who went on to win the Super Bowl your rookie season and who some say was the greatest NFL team, and especially that defense. That defense is always so heralded. What was that turnaround like for you? Well, it was it was, it was a great year. I mean, obviously, uh, 1985, and when you mentioned the Chicago Bears, that was, you know, probably the Bears, obviously the Bears' best team ever, but, uh, you know, maybe top five, or, you know, people do say, some people do say it is the best team ever, but I don't know with regards to that, but, um, but just the idea that I was on that team and I was playing special teams and I was basically, uh, inside the, the ropes, if you, if you want to say, and kind of, you know, being with those personalities and being with those players, it was a, it was a dream come true. And growing up in Flint and, you know, knowing that Chicago was a rival of the Lions, that was, it was, it was fun. It was fun to, to take part in it. Well, I, uh, I have a confession. I just got done watching the Super Bowl shuffle. You had some pretty awesome dance moves back in the day. You know, who thought of doing that, and did you have fun doing it? You know, I did have fun. Again, I was a rookie that year. Um, I was by myself, so I didn't have anything to do. And they they asked anybody if they wanted to come down and, and take part in it, then, you know, show up at this place. Uh, and we filmed, and we made the, you know, the video the whole day and just had fun, but... I, yeah, the, the idea of the dancing moves was Mike Singletary's, and I blame him for all the embarrassment I've had over the last 30 years or whatever it's been, 28 years. But, 
it was uh, his idea to kind of put some type of you know dance moves together that we all took part in but but uh yeah you know that it was a great idea it was a lot of fun um and thank goodness we won the Super Bowl that's for sure <laughs> While the Bears did win the Super Bowl that season, you guys beat the New England Patriots 46-10. to What was that whole experience like for you, playing in the Super Bowl, winning the Super Bowl? That experience had to be pretty special for you. Well, just, again, the overall experience, knowing that you know, I grew up my whole life watching Super Bowls, watching them every year, you know, dreaming of becoming a National Football League player, and then, bam, my first year, I'm in the Super Bowl. It took Walter Payton, I think, 12, you know, 11, 10, 11, 12 years to get there, so... It was a it was a it was a dream come true and yeah, you know, we're preparing two weeks for the Super Bowl and then you know, I'm pinching myself every day. So it's it was a it was a great experience. Um something I'll never forget obviously and uh a great, great team with great coaches and just everything came together. Well that's the story of Jim Morrissey, Michigan State linebacker from nineteen eighty one through eighty four. Team captain, all big ten, Super Bowl winner with the nineteen eighty five Chicago Bears and member of the Super Bowl Shuffle. Thanks, Jim, for taking time out of your day to share your memories with us. Okay, take care. That concludes this episode of Big Ten Legends. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm your host, Seth Newman, and check back on SSN 24-7 throughout the week as we'll air more episodes of Big Ten Legends.